What if solving the world's meat consumption crisis didn't require us giving it up at all? We've taken Whoa. out Japanese quail cells. That's amazing. And you're telling me this is cultured meat? That's cultured meat. We found the Australian startup finding the answer. Woolly mammoth meatballs. It's actually starting a pretty important dialogue. Today, we're taking you to Val's HQ. The Australian startup on a mission to fulfill exhausting global meat demands by diversifying the human diet. All miraculously, without relying on unethical yet prevalent factory farming and habitat destruction. It seems too good to be true, so here's the twist. Unlike plant-based meat brands that try to imitate existing products and failed miserably. Why hasn't plant-based meat broken through? Meat eaters just aren't that interested. Val isn't just recreating what we already have, they're innovating. In this video, you'll see their advanced cell culture technology used to grow any meat throughout Earth's entire history. Why compete with traditional meats when there are 8,000 species of mammals out there? But like you, we've seen the documentaries, the YouTube comments, the global fear mongering and more. So the timeless question that we all have is, does Val's cultured meats deliver the protein, collagen, nutrients, and more found in traditional meats? And is it healthy for you? I know what you're thinking. Haven't we all seen this movie before? How can we trust food grown in a factory? What happens if Val doesn't find product market fit? And even if cultured meat win over our regulators and the public, can it actually replace our steaks? Well, that's why we got exclusive access to Val HQ to help us all answer these questions. And if you stick around, you're about to see it firsthand too. Hey, I'm George. Uh, I'm Val's founder and CEO, and it was my idea to build this crazy company. I'm Ellen, and I'm Val's CEO. I've been with the company for about four years now, which makes me one of this almost ancient ones on the ground. Val's story began with a bold, contrarian bet to help fulfill the world's growing meat demand while helping the planet, something scientists once thought impossible. Year over year, global demand for meat continues to go up. Folks here are meat eaters, and we have the utmost respect for local Australian farmers and, frankly, farmers all around the world. There's nothing else quite like it. It's the highest, in my mind, is the highest quality source of protein available to me and, frankly, just tastes really good. If you just kind of look at different industries and the percent contributions that they have towards CO2 emissions. Animal agriculture is constantly flagged as one of the top few. Guardian headlines that meat accounts for nearly 60% of all greenhouse gases for the global food system is the primary driver of biodiversity loss. We need to change what we put on the table and how we produce food. Livestock production is responsible for about 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than cars, planes and all other forms of transport put together. And the demand for beef and dairy is continuing to increase. The reality is that the food system as it exists today cannot meet the growing demands that humans have for meat over the next 50 years. And so someone has to help fill that gap to support our local fee systems as they are. Alternatives aren't working. Um, at best, some of those products are convincing vegetarians and vegans to eat something new, but they're not shifting carnivores eating habits. And kind of maybe, why should they? And so that's our whole ethos here, which is there's this existential challenge for us in terms of the environment that people want to eat and eat, so why not just make a better version of it? We're trying to supplement and augment the food system as it is today. There's about 6,000 species of mammals and another 11,000 species of birds on this planet, and yet we've got chicken, cows, pigs. The future of meat will be a kaleidoscope of choice, with many options for each of us to pick from selfishly, because they're more delicious and more desirable than eating animals. Val's contrarian thesis is that the key to change in the future isn't asking people to give something up. Rather, it's about giving them something new instead. But does Val truly have the technology to support this and create a better version of meat? Uh, I remember talking to a meat scientist at some university in the Netherlands and I asked him the question, why is meat so good? Why is it so desirable? Why is it so satiating? And his answer was, we don't really know, but we know it's very complex. It requires a complement of dozens or hundreds of different biomolecules that in combination give you that sensory experience and that satiation that comes from eating it. And then the only way you're gonna create that is using tissue of animals. And the only way to produce that with our animals is cell culture, so here we are. There's been a lot of hype around cell cultivated food. Cultured or cultivated meat 
is animal meat that is produced from animal cells without actually having to kill the animal. Think of a piece of meat on your plate in front of you. What you're eating is muscle, fat, and connective tissue mostly. And what we do is we take the cells that repair those tissues and we grow them outside of the animal. I often compare it to thinking about growing a plant. You gotta have seeds. You gotta understand what type of soil to pot those seeds in, and then you have to know the growing conditions. Growing cells is not that different. And in cell culture, the soil and kind of way we grow it is in this juice that's called media, a mixture of vitamins, minerals, essentially trying to recreate the conditions you'd have in your body that make growing cells really effective. So what happens is the cells are prepped, they're put in that media, that juice they grow in, and then they're piped in here into the 200 liter. It's essentially creating and trying to replicate the conditions in which our very own bodies, or animals' bodies, in which cells would grow. At the end of the day, we're creating food. And so if people don't want to eat it, we're not going to invest more time in that cell line. I picked a particularly difficult company to start. There are three companies in the world which have been approved for sale. Val, Just, and Upside. The other two have raised more than 600 million US dollars each compared to the 56 million Val has raised and we're operating at larger scale and we've sold considerably more products than either of them. We have this balance of three different risks of uh, technology and scale up, regulation and consumer acceptance, which gives us a very deep moat. It also means you have to believe that we can overcome multiple challenges at the same time in order to realize the commercial outcomes that we've set out to. We have to be world-class in about five or six different areas in R&D, so in our product development and our regulatory affairs to even come to market. We had to be a world-class manufacturer and producing cell culture at you know, 100 times cheaper than any large-scale cell culture in history. And that means our margin of error is incredibly small. We attract really amazing people that want to work on really, really, really hard problems and truly intractable problems. I'm not aware of any other team, certainly in Australia, that has people from like mechanical fitters and welders through to consumer marketers that are operating out of the same building. What you can see here is factory two, which is really our commercial food factory. This is where we produce all of our cultured meat from start to finish. How much does a buyer act to like this cost? To look at about 1.5 million US okay. dollars. Val is like, you know, the world leader um, with cultured meat. And so I'm interested, like what has Val done that the rest of the sort of cultured meat companies have not done? I know you touched on a few things that are really important, like the cost cutting, the first principles thinking, but like what's really differentiated Val? I would say there's like two main things in, in my mind. The cost of this facility is a fraction of the cost of other cultured meat facilities today. And then I think the second big differentiator is on our product side. So we're really trying to create products that consumers have never tried before with new textures, new tastes, and new animals. And so by creating these completely unique products, it gives us a really unique position in the market and with consumers that separates us from the rest of the cultured meat industry. We're always trying to compress timelines trying to see how we can do things faster and so for example to procure a bioreactor like this off the shelf takes probably a year to a year and a half we were able to do that from like me starting the design to actually install in six months at some of our competitors they procure something off the shelf and if they have an issue then they need it's like a whole like four month process right it makes no sense on paper how did Val build the world's most efficient bioreactor better and cheaper than anyone else? I mean, they broke a Guinness World Record last month. They produced 20,000 litres of cell culture in just one day. We basically tried to eliminate anything that wasn't dictated by physics and tried to remove complexity where it wasn't needed. We were essentially able to eliminate about uh, like 45% of the cost compared to a similar system. When you compare our first generation, this was uh, procured from another vendor, to our in-house design system, you see big differences from the footprint to the cost associated with it. We were talking to vendors and no one can believe the price points that we were able to get at. We redesigned a new process from the ground up. Uh, and what that means is that we can produce on the order of three times as much cell mass with that new process as compared to our old. So practically what that 
would look like is producing on the order of thousands of kilos of cell mass from Andromeda every month. So the more we learn, the more mature the system gets to the point where we can like start making hundreds of these and deploying them across the entire world, honestly. Before we reveal Val's plans to change public perception, we'll be first trying their latest creations, a luxury foie gras and parfait made from cultured Japanese quail, to see for ourselves whether the future of food is ready for the world. What's the difference between cultured meat and processed food? Because I feel like intuitively you'd think that is this food processed or is it not? I think processing has this really negative connotation. But like processing, if you get sausages in a butcher and they pass it through a grinder, that's processing food. I don't challenge it. I, everything is processed yeah. unless you're literally picking it from the ground. So yeah. I, I'm, yeah, as someone who like to eat quite healthily, I'm not too, like, I'm not too worried about that side or that tagline for things. Great. So for your first course, we have our Japanese quail parfait uh, with a little bit of warm sourdough. So the parfait is our first product. It is creamy, it is light, it's rich, it's sexy, it's fun. Um, dip in with your spoon, try it on a bit of bread and enjoy every moment. Cool. So we dip it on the bread? Yeah, dip it in awesome. with a spoon, try, try it with so. a bit of bread, just dip the bread in. All right, That's really right. good. So you're telling me this is cultured meat? That's cultured meat. Wow. Um, it's, we've taken Whoa. our Japanese quail cells. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, but we use the same principle you would a traditional parfait. A yeah. traditional French parfait. We cook it down uh, with a bit of vegetables and garlic. So your next course is our foie and scallops. Uh, so we've got a beautiful pan seared forge grass. That gives you that light, creamy, delicate texture. How do we eat this thing? <laughs> Dig in. Um, I would knife and fork. Get try and get every element. Get a bit of yeah. everything. Yeah. Get a bit of scallop. Get a bit of foie. Get a bit of berry. Okay. Enjoy. This is one of the tastiest things I've ever eaten, and you're telling me this is cultured meat. Yes. We think about product and go to market there's a really big consumer perception challenge the the first of which is often when i'm describing what we do to someone who's maybe never heard of it their immediate reaction is oh so that's similar to to v2 or to impossible and then i have to explain to them hey no those products are made of plants most companies in the space of alternative protein started at the bottom going for things like beef burgers, very low price products that are highly commoditized. There was a belief that there was a huge market and it was about a race of getting into that market. As Beyond Meat stumbled, Impossible stumbled, that story unwound. What we do is actually grow real meat. If you look from a genetic perspective at our cells and what you would see in an animal, they're identical. So the core ingredient there is very, very different. The second misconception, which is that we're not here to replace your local farmer. We want to augment the food system and make sure that everyone has access to really great meat and the food that they love. We always believe that starting at the top and kind of following the, uh, following the process that Tesla went through, starting with very high-end products and coming down market, was far more likely to create widespread consumer behavior change. So that's why our first brand is a luxury brand called Forge. And right now it's on market in Singapore and we'll soon be launching across a number of other jurisdictions. It's sold in really high-end restaurants and now moving into some kind of higher-end but casual dining spaces, specifically as a way of creating that positive influence and halo effect. So ultimately we own the right to come down market and be in supermarkets with that positive perception. Since her inception in 2019, Val has come incredibly far, from passing multi-year regulatory approval processes to growing a global team of 70 to being Australia's leader in cultured meat. And yet somehow it's just the start. Sitting down in a restaurant for the first time and eating a product that we had developed and that was truly first in worlds, um, that's a pretty hard to beat moment. Um, it was very, very surreal and very, very exciting. I'm also really proud of what's right behind me with Andromeda, a completely bespoke bioreactor designed to be cost effective and scalable. It's something I never imagined we would do. It's something I never imagined we would be uniquely good at. And to realize how far ahead this puts us against everyone else in the world across pharmaceuticals and food, 
Uh, I'm really, really proud of what we've accomplished there. And it feels like we're just at the start line of this manufacturing journey. We hope we'll be launching in Australia in just a couple of months. So the thing which always inspired me about building Bao was this sense that you could create meat that is truly no compromise. Really, really tasty, really nutritious, really affordable and really sustainable. In 20 years, if everything goes well, you'll be walking into the supermarket and instead of buying beef, chicken or pork, you're gonna be buying something which you may cook in the same way as a beef mince, but it's gonna taste better. It's gonna taste like Wagyu beef. It's gonna have the nutritional profile of a salmon filler with heaps of omega-3s and maybe plenty of iron in there as well and loads of protein. And it's gonna last six weeks in your fridge and it's gonna be really, really easy to cook and it's gonna have a tiny, tiny environmental footprint. That's ultimately what I believe people are gonna be eating in 10 to 20 years. Uh, and that's exactly what we've set out to produce. It's just we have to go, for, uh, we have to start at that very high end and gradually earn our way down market to create that type of consumer behavior change. But I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe we could build the biggest food company in history.